All right, guys, uh, we're going to start the second chapter for organized society project, right? And that is leadership. Uh, the, like, do you guys have any questions regarding the first chapter? Look at slides, we'll again, right? Of the first chapter. So, do you have any confusion of the first chapter? Okay, hold on, hold on. We did not complete the first chapter entirely. There's some, there was something left of the first chapter. Hold on, let me like review it. Mm. Yep. Okay, I distinctly remember we did to equity and but we did not do anything else. So yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. All right, so we're gonna continue it and then complete this first chapter. All right, so you guys know what's the cognitive theories of motivation. We've done that. We've done the need theories of motivation, the first section, right? When you guys make notes, you should like kind of distinguish which theory falls under which section. So now we're gonna talk about the uh, uh, the behavioral uh, theories of motivation as in it's going to be about rewards and punishment that basis so we're going to talk about different rewards uh that is included in motivation and by that we're going to talk about different motivations so let's get into it the first section as in how many types of motivators are there so they're intrinsic and extrinsic, intrinsic motivators, right? So it's very different. Uh, so in this chapter, you need to be very, very sure what is the intrinsic and what's the extrinsic motivator and what does it mean? So extrinsic means like something that comes from outside, right? And intrinsic something that comes from inside. So there's, a, there's this concept that you can feel internally, re, internally rewarded for doing a job done. And there's something that you feel externally rewarded for getting the job done. So if you might have experienced some sort of like inner satisfaction or like inner peace or enjoyment while you do something, even though you might not get money for, you might not get any recognition, praise, anything, nothing, but you feel this inner satisfaction, inner peace, inner uh, enjoyment that is falling under the intrinsic reward. Intrinsic reward, is something in, in uh, that no one gives you, you give it to yourself. Uh, if you want to understand it in terms of that perspective, extrinsic is what you get and someone else gives it to you. You don't do it by yourself, someone else gives it to you. As in payment, promotion, recognition, benefit, bonuses, etc., that you get in your company when you get the job done. Salaries are also part of extrinsic motivation. Bonuses are also part of extrinsic motivation. Uh, leaves vacations are also part of intrinsic motivation some, some something that someone else gives it to you so you should be very clear in what these mean and you should be very clear in the examples of extrinsic motivations and they do ask you in cie what is extrinsic and what is intrinsic motivation so uh if you think about it the definition says the intrinsic motivation is employees the reason why the, the employees are mentioned because it is organized psychology. So intrinsic motivation is where an employee is driven to accomplish an internal goal, right? Internal desire, internal desire to succeed to accomplish an internal goal. So if you remove every single word, uh, word that is internal and replace it with external, that is gonna be the definition of extrinsic motivation. Intrinsic, remove it extrinsic, right? Internal uh, desire, you remove it external desire. To meet external goals, you write extra internal goals, you replace with external goals, and you have the definition for extrinsic motivation. So anything that employee does to internal desire to accomplish an internal goal is intrinsic motivation. External desire to meet an external goal is extrinsic motivation. So that's your CI definition, and that's what you are required to know in terms of extrinsic and intrinsic motivation. Yes, in extrinsic motivation you do have different uh examples in intrinsic motivation there is no example as per se it's like the enjoyment of the task itself that you are doing all right so that's why they ask sometimes 
the examples for, for more extrinsic reward rather than intrinsic because extrinsic reward has more examples than intrinsic reward systems. So examples are also important for you to remember. All right, so there's a design question, right? And and yeah, for this, this, this is where the extrinsic and intrinsic motivation ends. There is no theory, uh, there's no, sorry, experiment following up to this. This is where it ends in your syllabus officially, just the definition. So it's purely a theoretical concept, right? If you want to talk about reductionist, deterministic, uh, nature, nurture, uh, we would get right into that. So it is extrinsic or, sorry, is it reductionist holistic? I'm going to say it's both because it talks about both aspects of motivators, right? So in that regard, it is uh, holistic in that sense. Is it nature nurture? It's not applicable over here. Is it deterministic free will? It's not applicable over here. Uh, is it uh, individual or situational? Hold on, Iva. Sir, when will it help us design a study? All right, I get I get confused. Did I help you design a study or did, did I not? Like, is it the abnormal group or did I do it with you guys? I like kind of get confused every single time. I have not done design a study with you guys yet. Zero. All right, so like, so this is a good opportunity to do like work up on that. So we're gonna get right into that in today's class, a design and study question. So before that, we're gonna have to evaluate it. Is it individual or situational? Well, it's, 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 it's like uh, in terms of motivators, is the individual because different individuals might feel different regarding intrinsic motivation. For example, if a task is intrinsically motivating one employee, that same task may not intrinsically motivate that other employee. So what the person feels motivated by intrinsically is dependent upon the individual itself. Uh, and prince extrinsic motivators, right? Uh, again, it's also dependent on the person as in some extrinsic motivators may be motivating for the person. For example, there could be a person that doesn't care for pay raise, they want a promotion. It could be a person who don't, doesn't care about promotion, they care about pay raises. So it comes down to the individual itself of what motivates them and what does not. So that's the person, my stance on that, right? You could argue it some other way. Uh, is it a culture bias? Well, you could argue it is, for example, extrinsic motivators over here are materialistic, right? In other cultures, there might be other form of extrinsic motivators, right? For example, uh, some companies give the uh, give the opportunity of kind of like diversifying their jobs. For example, employees are given the opportunity to do something new, so they they don't get bored, and that could also be seen as an extrinsic motivator. Is that is done in some cultures is not done in every single culture so not everything is about money in some cultures and over there that is practiced for example intrinsic motivators can also be a cultural factor for example you have the spiritual factor of you know like uh earning uh good deeds for example your job may not pay much right for example like if you're an ambulance driver for cheap or easy, right? It doesn't pay much, but you have this intrinsic motivation factor that you're doing a good deal. And this is culturally seen more in cultures that are inclined towards religion than some cultures which are not inclined towards religion. So it might be culturally determined, determined by that factor. Uh, regarding application to daily life, it is applicable because these both type of these motivators are present in organizations and it, these are both uh, essential in their own regards. Uh, other than that, is it cost effective? Well, intrinsic motivators may be more cost effective because they require nothing uh, tangible. Extrinsic motivators may be more costly because obviously payment bonuses, etc., do cost money. And intrinsic motivators does not cost money. So in that regard, that's how you can differentiate it. Now, coming on to the design experiment part, this one. So when you design an experiment, right, there are certain generic points that you need to mention or do you need to meet before you uh, get the mark. So CIE says that the design question is of 10 marks. 
That's why, of course, you need to meet. You need to mention the IV, you need to mention the DV. And after you mention the, that, you need to operationalize them. Then you come out to the settings, tell me the design, uh, the methodology you're going to use, right? Is it going to be questionnaire? Is it interview? Is it observation? Tell me the types of those observations, interviews, and questionnaires. And example questionnaires if it's an interview or a questionnaire. Four questions of, are enough. Four example questions are enough. The um, controls that you're going to use, the ethical concerns that you're going to have, the type of data you're going to get, qualitative, quantitative, or both, the data analysis that you're going to use. So, uh, and also, who are your people, the sample, and how are you going to get them? Sample technique. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So, these are the major points that you are supposed to mention. Does it have to be any particular order? No, but what I would like to like tell my student is that you could do something like in this particular order. Get IV and DV out of the way. Get the settings out of the way. Tell me who are your people? Uh, how did you get them? Come on to the design, come on to the methodology, then do your controls, ethics, data analysis at the end. So, but there's no particular order that you should mention this way, but again, these are the points that you should mention to get your marks. One question for you guys. Do you know what's operationalization? Uh, what about you, Ramro? Uh, Ramon, do you know what's operationalization is? Like, is that your answer for operationalization? How the study is conducted? Is that your answer or is that another question? How the study is conducted? Uh -uh. All right. All right, all right. See, this was supposed to be told you to you guys in AS. Um, it might have been told to you guys, like you might have been told differently, and that's okay. All right, so like, all right, uh, but if we if we look at this experiment as an example, uh, yeah, this one. Design a questionnaire to investigate whether intrinsic or extrinsic motivation is more effective for workers in your organization. All right, so this is the question. Question step number one. First step, identify the IAV and DB. So which one is the IAV? Which one is the DB? What's the IV here? What's the DB here? Again, what's the cause and effect? The cause is the IV, the effect is the DB. The thing that you're investigating is the DV, the result that you're going to get, the data that you're going to get. Whatever that is, that's going to be your DV. Yeah. Nice. IV is the intrinsic and extrinsic motivation. You're right about that. So, yes, that is the IV, and DV is then ultimately going to be what? Then how would you, what would be the dependent variable DV calculate? All right, the effectiveness for work or not. All right, Iman, were you able to understand how IV and DV were identified? <coughs> I don't remember. Okay. 
were you able to do this in this question, identifying the IV and the DV, or were you not? Did you have difficulty identifying the IV and DV in this question? Because like if you are not able to get the IV and DV down, that like that's the first step. And if you get this first step wrong, every experiment that you're gonna conduct from this point on is gonna be wrong. If you mix up your IV and DV, so it's very essential for you guys to kind of identify the IV and DV. If this guy still have a problem, we will discuss that in a later class. Because once you get your IV and DV out of the way, so like IV is extrinsic, right? Extrinsic motivators and intrinsic motivators right uh, and the dv is effectiveness now the problem is like for example if i say i'm going to conduct an experiment on extrinsic and intrinsic motivators right that's fine and for that i'm going to measure the worker's effectiveness and that's still fine the problem is the problem is that there are so many definitions for extrinsic variable uh, sorry extrinsic motivators intrinsic motivators and there's so many perception of what is workers effectiveness if i give you an experiment to do this right if i give iman to find out the workers effectiveness if i give ramla the worker effectiveness if i give the same experiment to three students right three of them are going to conduct this experiment differently because some students are going to find out effectiveness in what some other manner, some students some affect some other manner, some students are going to, con, you know, like some student is going to give some other example of extrinsic motivators. Some students is, you know, every student has their own perception. So, what we mean by operationalization is specifically defining world variables in a manner. In which it is objectively defined and replicable. See, let's take a common example. Let's take a common example, right? Um, we're not talking about the philosophical definition of extrinsic motivators. I'm not saying that different people have different meanings. I'm saying different people have different way of measuring it, right? The definition concept is the same. How do we measure that differs between people? What do I mean? Everyone, let's take temperature as an ex experimental variable. Everyone knows what is hot temperature. Everyone knows what is cold temperature. Everyone knows that, right? No one's debating that hot temperature is philosophically different than cold. Everyone knows what it means. But, but, but the difference lies in on which temperature are you going to say is hot? Some people are going to say 100 is hot. Some people are going to say 90 is hot. Some people are going to say zero is cold. Some people are going to say 10 is cold, right? So every single person has their own perception of what is hot and cold. Everyone knows what's hot and cold, but perception is going to be different. So everyone else is going to give different results. So we want to fix that. We want to say hot temperature, any temperature that is above 100. Cold temperature, any temperature that is below what? 100, so 99. So when I give that criteria, no one can question what is mean, mean, meant by hot and cold. Everyone in everyone's mind, the temperature is the same now. Everyone who's a part of my study is going to measure the temperature the same manner. Same thing over here. Effectiveness. How do you measure effectiveness? How do you find out workers' effectiveness? How do you check it? So some people are going to say you do it through a questionnaire. All right. Some people are going to say, no, you count the number of boxes they pack in an hour. Some people are going to say, no, you check how timely, how functionally they arrive in their works. So effectiveness can have different forms that it can be measured. So we don't want that. We want one way to measure effectiveness. And that is what you need to operationalize it. That's that what it means. So operationalize how will you measure effectiveness? Give me one way in which you measure effectiveness that is objective and can be replicated. 
as in temperature, the way I have stated, is objective because it has units and it is replicable because anyone who can record temperature 100 can say it's hot. Anyone who can record temperature 99 stays cool. So how will you do this for dV? Operationalize the dV. How will you measure effectiveness? How will you define what's effective? In time, all right, like, okay, like some says, like, effectively made time. Time for what? Time what? Time in what sense? Time to do something, time time for what? How, so like, how quick, how quick to do what? How fast they're doing something? What are they doing? For specific work done. Uh, so like, how fast they do a task? Now, task would mean many, many things. What task? Do we mean? I need to specify a task. How fast they do state a specific task they do. It can be any task. All right. Effectiveness. Of uh, how uh, how how many words type uh, while writing in a minute. Now, now when I now this is the way I'm going to define effective. Effectiveness for me in my current experiment is this: the number of words they type in an article for a minute. Now, the minute is the point where it it makes it objective. Because a minute has 60 seconds, 60 seconds, same for me, same for you, and it is measurable. And if I do this experiment somewhere else, and if I, if I do this effectiveness checking the same manner, it is replicable because I can do it, do it again and again and again in different experiments. So this is the way I'm going to define effectiveness. Effectiveness defined by the number of words employee types per minute while, while writing an article. Now, this leaves no doubt what effectiveness means. So is this clear of how you def objectively define an a DV? It's gonna take some practice, but were you able to uh, get it? All right, same thing for IV. Now the problem with IV is there are many different examples of extrinsic motivators. There are many different ways for intrinsic motivators, right? So you wanna know which one kind of makes people type fast. Now, your one theory is if you give extrinsic motivators, they're gonna type fast, but what extrinsic motivators are you gonna give? You, some of you will say we give them more money. Some of them will say you give them more bonuses. Some of them you will say you give them vacations. So it's a different, so obviously there's a problem in defining what extrinsic motivators are. So for the experiment, for this experiment's sake, you need to come up with one definition. That is gonna be what? Operationalism. What in extrinsic motivators are we gonna, what is it that is gonna be our extrinsic motivator in this experiment? Because there's so many, we need to narrow it down. Uh, bonuses, now bonuses can have different percentages. Obviously it is frustrating for you guys because you guys have not been in company. So bonuses are bonuses, right? So that, there are different percentages one 10 percent 20 50 so you can't you and you say bonuses you need to specify the percentage as well like what percentage of bonuses all right so you have 30 percent so our extensive 
uh, motivator is defined by 30% bonus. So this leaves no room and confusion what our extrinsic motivator is. It's not pay, it's not promotion, it's 30% bonus. Percentage is also specified. Now, intrinsic motivation over here could mean many things. It is the joy that they get, you know, like, it, it, INTR is intrinsic motivator. So like intrinsic motivator is like, how will you, what is the definition here? Is it the joy they get while they do their work? Or is it the like spiritual satisfaction? There's so many things, right? So you will need to kind of define the intrinsic motivation that they feel. It is the enjoyment while they feel that they do a job. Achievement, sense of achievement, sense of achievement, sense of achievement, sense of achievement. All right, sense of achievement can be defined as sense of achievement. Sense. as in completion of an article could be their sense of achievement or something like that, right? So there's no uh, confusion what is intrinsic motivators. We are saying sense of achievement is a intrinsic motivator. So this is how you write. The IV, you, you don't write an aim. You don't write aim because aim is the question, right? Question is written, so the aim is written. So this is the aim, it's already written. So you directly start. The IV for this experiment is the Level one is the extrinsic motivator, which is operationalized by 30% bonus. And level two of IV is intrinsic motivator, which is operationalized by sense of achievement. The dependent variable for this experiment is gonna be the effectiveness of workers, which is going to be operationalized by the number of words they type while writing an article per minute. Uh, explain one. All right, see operational, okay. The problem is when you conduct experiment, you IV and DB could mean so many things, right? And it could be measured in different manner. So yeah, effectiveness could mean so many things. So what we're doing is narrowing it down. We're, we're trying to say, or trying to define effectiveness in a manner that is going to be specific for our study. We're going to define how to measure effectiveness. What is effectiveness in our study? We're going to define that specifically. And the way we're gonna do that is use, we're gonna use objective means. So when we say in my experiment, the way to measure effectiveness in my experiment is to find out how many words people write in an article per minute. See, if you, like, if you don't write this, if you don't write this, right? How many words they type while writing an article? There's still confusion. Like under a minute, under an hour, under five minutes. So, no, you said minute. A minute has 60 seconds. It is standardized for all. It is objective for all. So when you add a quantitative value, minute, it makes it objective. And uske you wrote ke ko major karna. So you write words while they type while writing an article. So you also specified the task. The more specific you are, the more objective it means. All right. Uh, so again, as I said, my IV is this, my IV level one is this, IV level two is this, and a DV is this, right? Operationalized as this is this. So once you tell it as it is, you can move on to the setting. So look at this question again. You need to find out which one is more effective to your workers, extrinsic or intrinsic, right? So where are you gonna conduct an experiment? Conduct it in a work. Gonna be conduct in an office. So if it, uh, Iman, I don't understand your answer. Is conducted is it is going to be conducted in an extrinsic what? I understand the office part. I understand the intrinsic part. What do you mean by extrinsic? Uh, extrinsic, extrinsic. Yeah, like the setting is extrinsic. Uh, so then okay. So basically, whatever you write, whatever you write here, right, your uh, setting needs to be defined three ways. Either it's going to be a lab, a field, or a naturalistic experiment, right? So 
whatever you write here, it should be later followed up by, hence it is a lab experiment, or hence it is a field experiment, or hence it is a naturalist experiment. So if I write, it is going to be conducted in an office. And hence, this is a, which experiment would it be? Lab field naturalistic. Not naturalistic. There is a reason why it's not naturalistic. What about you, Iman? What what was the setting? Is it going to be lab? Is it going to be field? Is it naturalistic? Then field. Um, all right, uh, Iman, what you, what you say is lab field naturalistic. It's it is in an office field. All right, understand this. The reason why it is a field experiment is number one, it is being conducted in an office, so it is there you know, the realistic environment that they usually live in. And, that, and the naturalistic uh, experiment also has a definition that you conduct the experiment in a realistic environment. The only difference is if you introduce the IV yourself, then it's a field experiment. Over here, you're kind of introducing the IV, right? They were fine since you come along. You come along introducing all these IVs yourself. So then it makes it a field experiment. If the IVs were naturally occurring, Right, you did not have to do anything. You just sit back and observe, doing nothing. IVs naturally occurring by themselves, then it becomes a naturalistic, naturalistic experiment. But look at here, you you're kind of you're kind of gonna mingle. You're kind of gonna in, introduce an extrinsic questionnaire motivator or an intrinsic motivator. And no, not only that, you're gonna interact with the person using a questionnaire. So. It's no way naturalistic because you are going to interact with people. So you're going to disrupt the natural flow. Anything that you do to disrupt the natural flow while they are in a realistic setting, field experiment. If you don't dis disrupt the natural flow, it's a naturalistic experiment. So there's two ways that you can disrupt the natural flow, either by introducing the IV in the environment by yourself or interacting with the parsman. So over here, you are going to interact with the parsman. Even if you say that I'm not going to interact with the parchment using a researcher or using office worker as my colleague and make him distribute the questionnaire, still the questionnaire doesn't exist. It exists because of you, because you are doing an experiment. The questionnaire won't exist if you weren't not there. So you are disrupting the experiment, uh, sorry, their environment somehow. That's why it's field experiment. Is that clear? So, all right, so it is gonna be feel like sample. All right, so like these are your workers, like sample is up to you. There's no specification, so you can choose as many people as you want, but, and you can choose them as like the way you like them. So what, what's your sample? Give me data, who are your people and how are you gonna get them? All right, you have 60 people. So I have the number of people, all right? I, all right like, I take 60 people, but 30 female, 30 males. So I'm gonna combine your answer to both. All right, so like, is there anything else that you like to add other than number and gender? See, number and gender are what you add generally. Is there anything more you can add? Give me an age group, give me an age group, come on. Give me an age group. If I do sixty, all right, I okay, I can, I can do that. I can I can give the age range, all right. But still, these are generic, right? Uh, when you come into A two, you need to up your game. You need to up your sample. You need to tell me more. What 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 do I mean? See, when you make experiments for health psychology, health psychology, 
it's going to be about health, right? So you're, the people you're going to select, yes, the number of people, the gender, the ages will be there, but you're also going to tell what disease they're going to have. At normal psychology, you're going to select people who have a certain psychological condition. So you, that over here is organizing psychology. So office people, employees. So you need to tell me about what's their work, what's department, what department they're in, what sort of work they are doing, like what, you know, like their experience, something related to do with their work. Just tell me about their, the, something which, uh, okay, they shouldn't be physically, mentally ill. All right, that's, that's still generic for organizer psychology. Any something specific work related, like experience or a department they're in. All right, so in the construction industry, article writing in the construction industry, you want to do that? You want to go for that? I'm fine. I'm fine if you guys are fine with the construction industry, people who write an article. Might be difficult to explain, but still, if you say, okay, fine. People of the construction industry who Magazines. All right. You could either tell me their job department or you can also tell me their experience. Experience is like what? One to three years of experience. One to three years of experience, right? Could be a bank. Or uh, could be a bank, right? But you get the idea. You have to specify the department or the nature of job they do, or which sector they're working and the experience. Uh, for time's sake, I'm gonna stay with construction because I don't wanna change that. So, all right, assignment technique, how did you get them? You know, there are three type of assignment technique. So which one did you use? Random sampling. You guys do know that when you write a sampling technique, you're supposed to explain how are you, how did you do that too, right? So how did you do random sampling? Or oh, it's random sampling and it was done through, or it was done at, and we did it as we, like you have to explain the procedure too. Choosing people from different departments. You, all right. I'm gonna restart this uh, class because there's one minute left on my timer. Then I'm gonna be back and then we're gonna still keep the discussion going. So like, I'm gonna end this class, introduce a new link so we can have the class.